Blake has done yeah. quite interesting on metaphors, uh, but I don't think they carry very far in the study of acquisition of, math of the nature of mathematics. Uh, we understand and a fair amount about the nature and acquisition of mathematical knowledge. I should mention that this has, uh, in the history of the theory of evolution, this is a major issue. So you go back to the origins, Charles Darwin, his associate, uh, Anthony Wallace, the co-discoverers co, uh, of the theory of evolution about the same time, they had a major, a major concern to them was how come humans all know arithmetic? They didn't know that that was a fact. They surmised that it was, as we know have good evidence that it is a fact. So all of us know arithmetic. One of the properties of arithmetic is that the natural numbers go on forever. One, two, three, four, there's no limit. There's no biggest number. How do we all know this? It couldn't have been achieved by natural selection. So arithmetic was barely even used until a very recent period of human existence and then by very few people. So there's a big paradox for them. Uh, Wallace thought that some new principle of evolution was required. Darwin hoped that some might get with it by natural selection, but it goes way back, but it's a fact. Humans have an innate capacity for arithmetic. Well, we now have a good, fairly good explanation of that. Turns out that if you take the simplest possible operation, the operation that's combinatorial operation, uh, what we call merging language, if you take that in its simplest form as a unary operation, not a binary operation, just applies to one thing, not two. Th For language, it applies to two things and puts them together. Suppose it just applies to one thing even simpler. And suppose there's only one word in the language, one lexical item, simplest possible language. If you have one lexical item, unary operation of merge, you get the successor function and the basis for addition can be shown. So you're on your way to arithmetic and very likely the basis for it. It's very, uh, what about the rest of mathematics? Well, a famous comment by a famous mathematician, Kronecker, metaphorically saying, God created the natural numbers. He has created all the rest. Whatever he may, may have meant by it, we have a way of saying it. Uh, created the rest. Uh, set theory, uh, non-Euclidean geometry. So on. Uh, but it looks from where we now stand as though the kind of basis for mathematics is two in one is the intuition of natural numbers, infinite uh, recursive enumeration, uh, generative procedure, language in a more complex sense. Uh, the other is uh, a visual space. which is probably the basis for geometry, which goes back millennia to the Babylonians. It's probably spelling out intuitions about what becomes formalized. And what you get is uh, efforts to prove theorems. Goes back to modern mathematics. Uh, then come other developments, all from human creative capacities. But I don't see any role in this for conceptual metaphors. It seems to me we have to look at the actual existence and construction. Of course, that leaves open. Notice we're talking about knowledge of arithmetic. We're talking about how we know arithmetic. 
Then comes the question, what is arithmetic? Or that that's beyond us. Here we move to Plato. They just exist in, you know, in an ideal world. We have nothing to say about it. There's a lot of, uh, it's a huge topic in philosophy of mathematics, but I think it basically let out issue.